I'm sure we've all thought, or maybe some of us have more than others, about our calling in life. I know some of you are at the end of what you thought might be, what, if you might still even have a calling after all you're in retirement. For some of you though, you'll find that retirement can be full of opportunities and you may find yet a third or fourth swing of things and another calling, a desire to do something more, a desire to still go out and volunteer and do what Betty does, which is stay up all night sometimes at the homeless shelter at daybreak or Marlene helping out so much at the Lions Club, or some others of you, like Lori, for helping out here in the temple. It is an opportunity. So I ask, what is your calling? When we look into the Parsha by Ikra, the book of Leviticus, it is this wonderful, wonderful Parsha that takes place right in the heart of the Bible. It is so full of exciting things like helping a priest be able to tell if a house is full of leprosy or how a priest should slaughter that heifer in just that right way. Let me tell you, even the rabbis saw it in the second century and were like, let's read this thing in a little different way because the temple's not here anymore and we shouldn't necessarily read it literally, literally. Maybe we want to read it metaphorically. And so maybe this, this time I will take an opportunity to do just that as we kind of jaunter through the book. When you open up the book of Leviticus, you'll find the word vaikra. Well, it's not a very exciting word, but what is exciting, if you look at it, is that the Olaf in Vaikra is oddly smaller than the rest of the letters. The rest of it looks normal, like every other letter that's surrounding it. But Vaikra, hmm, it's not. What else begins with Olaf, you may ask? Well, Ani me. Don't forget, Vaikra is all about God calling, Vaikra el Moshe. God called to Moses and delivered to Moses a very specific set of instructions. Instructions about how he is supposed to help inform the priests how they're supposed to pray to God. And I think when I thought about it, of course, to be a priest had to be a certain calling. After all, it was bloody affair. To be Moses and decide to step into that role, you have to also have a sort of a calling. You have to identify and actually walk into it. And if you kind of look at all of the prophets, be successful, they accepted their calling and then they walked into it. And it got me thinking about the idea of callings. When do we have them and how are we comfortable in walking through them? I don't know if any of you are avid New York Times readers like I myself am, but A.O. Scott announced recently that he is stepping down. He is the number one film critic for the New York Times. And when he described in a series of different interviews that he gave, he not only gave his own exit interview in a column in the Times, he, by the way, is transitioning to a different part of the Times where he'll be doing book reviews. Betty, he's gonna give you a run for your money. Um, but he kind of gave his own exit interview. And he talked about how film was for him a calling. He said, the thing I love most about the movies is their ability to obliterate reason and abolish taste. You know, the jump scare is coming, but you jump anyway. You suspect that you should be offended by the joke, but you laugh helplessly in spite of yourself. Why are you crying? You don't really know, but you can't argue with the tears. And when you go in and kind of listen and look at how for A.O. Scott, it wasn't just a calling that he did. It was a passion in his life that began when he was himself a teenager. And he describes writing reviews of over 2,000 movies. But the thing that kind of stumbled him and I'll get to that in a second, 
is the thing that I think is stumbling most of us. Society is changing. How we relate to things are changing. And so his calling in life is changing. We see it with teachers who frequently will share on TikTok and other places how their calling to teach just isn't quite what it once was. They still want to teach. They love teaching. But the parents aren't quite as supportive. And school boards don't really go there and give them all that they once needed. Instead, they decide to, I don't know, take books away and tell them that they can't talk about exciting things like Rosa Parks or sexual identity or anything else that, oh, I don't know, might be necessary in the formation of somebody's educational path at least presenting a broad variety of ideas. Might be something we as a liberal society, I'm not talking about politics, I just mean liberal as an open, might want to instill in others. Or how nurses and healthcare workers are still expressing how much burnout they have after the pandemic. An article in the New England Journal of Medicine entitled Confronting Health Worker Burnout and Well-Being described the heavy toll that the pandemic has taken on those who went into the field to help others, who felt a calling to go and reach out beyond just themselves, who were willing to put in 12-hour shifts at night dealing with exciting things like your vomit and your blood and maybe even your yelling as you dealt with your own illness who are themselves struggling to find out what is their calling. When I looked into A.O. Scott's further about why his calling isn't his calling, he threw out some things that I thought, well, I have to like race you. They're not always the most appropriate, but why the film industry has changed. And I think in a way it's a reflection of how life has changed and how he has had to go on a somewhat interesting journey of finding his calling further. He writes that in 2001, he reviewed what he described as one of his favorite movies. Now, I, I brace yourself for the title, it's not appropriate, but Freddie Got Fingered. It's a comedy directed and starring the Canadian comedian Tom Green. And it tests, of course, just as you would imagine with a title like that, every imaginable boundary of what is comedically acceptable to throw up on a screen. Ha ha ha, pun intended. In addition, he talked about how we might kind of look at it as a hot tub time machine and kind of in that sort of genre of really just inappropriateness. And, and he questioned how much safety is that now in presenting in the screen? How much space is allowed for those sorts of comedic gestures, which both poke at who we are as a society while also challenging us to become maybe even our higher selves? Do we accept that type of genre still? He argues that we instead allow for bigger genre, like blockbusters, like big blockbusters like Marvel with Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3 and DC Comics with Batman in all of its glory. Now, I love comics, but we've got Avengers 1 and I don't know, if I had Daniel here, he would list all of them for you, right? But just think, those are the types of movies that are being screened. The ones that aren't intended to upset you. The ones that are intended to make sure everybody feels okay. Hit the middle of the road. That have some comic, zing, comic zingers in them, but they're not intended to really get you up and going. That other things have disrupted the entertainment industry, like streaming services. Sure, you can pick one. Maybe you have subscriptions. I don't know if, if you're anything like me, you have subscriptions to more than one. Maybe you've got HBO or Netflix or Paramount or Peacock or, oh, I don't know, pick 
more. And what's the business of Netflix then? They're in the business of making sure you watch over and over. And just when you thought you finished watching your one movie, it's right to, to suggest the very next movie so that you're passively absorbed. So for A.O. Scott, he at one point did hear by Yikra, though I don't think he's Jewish and he would probably be shocked knowing that I gave a sermon quoting him, that he had a calling. And the calling for him was to write critical reviews, to bring people involved in a conversation about various films that were going to inspire, that were going to upset, that were going to cause us to think, that were going to get us up and out of our homes so that we would interact with one another in a movie theater. But his calling has had to change. And now he's doing it through book reviews. And we see that the calling for healthcare workers is also shifting, and the calling for teachers arts is also shifting, and how we engage as a society is changing. But, like I wanted to open and close with this contemplation on Vayikra, that just because the book called for us to focus on sacrifice and focus on blood and gore in the temple, and then the rabbis were called to look at it a little bit differently, Maybe we too need to be called to look at different things in our life a little bit differently so that we can still be inspired by it, but maybe we need to look at certain things metaphorically as we continue to go forward in this post-pandemic world. Shabbat Shalom.